This episode is brought to you by Buns. Hey, I'm Tom, and this is Aspect Science. Have you ever heard that tinned tuna can give you mercury poisoning? Now, I've only recently just heard about this idea, but the idea that something I eat fairly regularly could actually poison me is a little bit concerning. But is it true? Could one tuna sandwich too many really kill you? Well, actually, maybe. It's all to do with something called biomagnification. This is the process where a substance can actually increase in concentration as it moves up the levels in a food chain. And it actually happens with mercury in the environment. When mercury finds its way into the environment through natural processes or quite commonly from human activity like in industrial wastewater, it can be converted from inorganic forms into an organic form called methyl mercury through processes like bacterial activity. When absorbed by an organism, this methyl mercury can be really hard to excrete, so it can actually accumulate within them. Initially, it's absorbed by things like algae, which are then ingested by small organisms like shrimp, which in turn are eaten by small fish, and then bigger fish, and so on, moving up the food chain. Now, each large fish can accumulate the methyl mercury that all of its prey combined has stored, which can ultimately lead to them storing much higher concentrations than the individual organisms they have consumed. And the longer an organism lives, the more methyl mercury it can actually store in its tissues. And it's these high levels of methyl mercury that accumulate in shellfish and fish that we've got to worry about. Now, mercury is considered one of the most toxic substances that you can find in the environment. Methyl mercury from fish can cause damage to our body tissues, including the nervous system and the brain, which can lead to convulsions or paralysis, or even comas or death at high enough levels of exposure. And in pregnant women, it can impact the development of the developing child. And these potential effects of eating mercury-contaminated fish and shellfish have unfortunately become tragically real, like with incidents like Japan's Minamata City in 1956, where over 1,500 people died after industrial wastewater from a nearby chemical factory actually contaminated their local waters. Okay, so what does all this mean for tin tuna that you or I would buy from a shop nowadays? Does it mean that you should stop eating it? Well, no, not necessarily. Tuna is a great source of lean protein, which brings with it a whole heap of other nutritional benefits. For a lot of people, it's the cheapest and also their primary source of protein. And in a lot of cases, the benefits are gonna far outweigh the risks of eating it. But the fact remains that tin tuna does generally contain some level of mercury. Now doctors can test for levels of mercury in your body, but seeing as it's pretty unlikely that you're gonna be able to test yourself for mercury levels every single day, it's good to just have some guidelines that can generally steer us in the right direction. The EPA recommends a maximum consumption of 0.1 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day. And using data from the FDA, they've actually compiled a table outlining the average mercury concentration of a range of fish species, not just tuna. And Healthline has used this information and made it pretty easy to figure out with decent confidence how much you should limit yourself to. Now, for me, eating skipjack tuna, using these tables, it looks like I should be consuming no more than three cans a week, which really isn't too bad at all. And if you wanna check out these tables for yourself to get an idea of how much you should be eating, I'll make sure to put a link to all of them down below. But all this being said, there's actually evidence that certain aspects of tuna, like its omega-3 content, could actually counteract the harmful impacts of methyl mercury in tuna. So it's possible that these guidelines are being really conservative and future research might just show that we can actually eat a lot more than this. So as with a lot of things, more research is gonna be needed to be done. So it's probably a good idea to just limit your intake of tuna for the time being. And mixing up your diet a little bit isn't a bad thing anyway. Me personally, I don't really want to be eating tin tuna every single day anyway. So if it means that I might avoid getting mercury poisoning, then I'm completely happy with these guidelines. 
Now there is an important lesson that we can learn from this, that our waste can have terrible impacts on the environment, which can come full circle and have terrible impacts on us. Now in recent years, there's been a growing shift towards living a more sustainable and less wasteful lifestyle, which in itself is very exciting. But it's also the reason that I'm stoked to say that today's sponsor is Buns. Now Buns is an app-based marketplace, which is all about increasing sustainability and decreasing waste. It lets people trade goods with other people online and there's no money involved. So you can either trade item for item or you can use their BTZ or BITS currency that they created within app. And this BITS currency can also be used at some real world shops. The app is based around the idea that someone might want that thing that you don't use and was just going to end up as waste. Now they've already helped trade millions of items from houseplants to clothes and they've developed a real community of committed Buns users from around the world. Take a look at the app because your city might already have one of those thriving Buns communities. But if not, don't worry, you can be the pioneer that gets the ball rolling by posting that first item. It's that simple. There's a free download link down below in the description so make sure you check the app out and let me know what you think of it. And thank you once again to the lovely people at Buns for helping make this video happen. And with that, that is the end of this episode of Aspect Science. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and let me know what you think of the video down in the comments below. So until next time, you keep discovering the world around you and I'll see you then.